and welcome to Matt Nair on Air. So very happy to have you along with us. Jane, Matt Nair, Greg Buck, Galvin Butenhoff, all coming to you live from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. You can always join us, call or text at 844-967-2789-844-96. A party! Or leave a message on the live stream on Facebook YouTube and Twitter, all kinds of things coming up today. Going to have a very, very busy show. Next hour, our very own Jimmy Kuska is going to be joining us. There was an election yesterday. Uh, depending upon where you are, depending up that that is going to determine whether or not you had to go to the polls. But there were a lot of school referendums on the ballots all around the state. So Jimmy Kuska will be joining us at eleven thirty three to give us a little update yep. on which of those referendum passed, and then at eleven fifty. It's going to be a weekly segment from now on. Oh, are you serious? Yes. We're going to do Wednesday Weather and Wine with Brittany Merlot, Civic Media's meteorologist at 1150. Give us an update on what's happening. It is really a beautiful May day today. Yeah. And so Brittany's going to join us to give us an update on what's coming up. Maybe this is making up for the spring we never got last year. That's true. We never, we haven't had a good spring. No. It seems like in a really long time. My no. daffodils are coming up. They're coming up roses. They're coming up daff. They're coming up daffy. There you go. So, all right. Um, and just a reminder to download the Civic Media app at all of the places where you get your apps. It's on sale for $2,000 today. It's absolutely free. Oh. And check out the newly revamped website at civicmedia.us. Really, it looks great. All the shows. You can check out all the shows. You can look at all the podcasts and previous shows and check out the show notes if you're looking for information for something that we talked about. That is all there at civicmedia.us. Uh, we are going to start out, though, with episode 212, which is just a random number I <laughs> kind of picked out of the sky, uh, on your state government not working for you. Wow. I know. It just, it just, it just continues. Shocking. Yesterday, Senate Republicans in Wisconsin rejected four of Governor Tony Evers' appointments to the UW Hospital Board <laughs> and the State Natural Resources Board which means that Governor Evers probably appointed four replacements. Quote from the governor, Unfortunately, with these legislative Republicans, bipartisanship and common sense always seem to take two steps forward and two steps back. And that trend continued today when the Senate Republicans took up yet another group of exceptionally qualified citizen appointees and fired them simply for doing their jobs. In Mm. It's kind of standard operating procedure now. I mean, I feel like we praise them for being bipartisan at least once a week up there in Madison. And I, it, I don't want to say it gives me hope, but it's just, it's just nice. It's nice when they work together. And they actually and, do something for us. And, yes. then they, and then they pull this sort of shenanigans, hanky-panky stuff here. And then it makes me really then nervous about the whole maps thing. If they're just going to fire people willy nilly for, you know, no s severe good reason, then what's to say they're not going to start a hissy fit over the maps that they just voted on. Right. Well, I don't you feel like this is kind of a continuation of the hissy fit over the maps? Oh, over I, the I think, I think they, yes, the maps got passed. I don't think they see that as a victory. No, I think, well, it's not just the maps either. It's maps. It's Janet pro sandwich. It's Megan Wolf not getting impeached. It's uh, Janet Protosevich not rec recusing herself. It's Tony Evers winning a second term. It's the fact that their their dear leader in the assembly has an approval rating that is abysmal. What is it? Seven, 13, seven, 17 seven, Come on, Jane. Be nice. I, I 17 I apologize, my friend Robin. But yeah, they're for wanting to say 13 percent. It's a, a group of people who have so much power in government can barely make anything happen. And they're constantly stepping on rakes and hitting themselves in, in the face with the handles. And so this is just petty. These, yes. are just, these are just petty power moves. Yes. And I wouldn't be surprised if the people who work to appoint these people said to them, you're, you might get fired like fast. Because just be, be ready. That's what we're doing here right now. Um, Andrew in Maine on the live stream said, uh, hissy fits in Madison. How, sp how unspeakable, inconceivable. <laughs> Good. Little princess, little princess, princess vibe, uh, princess bride reference there. Yeah. So, I mean, 
But, well, I mean, let's not forget, too. I mean, they've been doing this for years. Yeah. When Tony Evers got reelected to his second term, they were still sitting on over 150 of his appointees. Yeah. So they've been having a hissy fit ever since he got elected, and the hissiness just continues. <laughs> The Hissington Party. Well, it's just, it's a, come on, you guys. Do could your you, job. I was going to say, could you imagine if they took all that just petty white energy? Uh, uh, that didn't make sense. I want to be petty white as like Betty White. Never mind. Point is, Tom Petty. Point is, can you imagine if they took all that energy? And I'm not saying they they back up everything Tony Evers does. But just, you know, leave the appointees alone and let them do their jobs. Look at the bills that are out there and vote on them together. Instead, it's this harumphing arms cross. Will you? I'm gonna take my ball and go home. And, well, and it's not like these people aren't qualified. They rejected former Lieutenant Governor Barbara Lawson, former Representative Sandy Pope of Mount Horeb, former Wisconsin Federation of Nurses and Health Professionals President Candace Owley, appointees to the UW Hospital Board. And they also rejected the governor's appointment of Tom Ams to the state's Natural Resources Policy Board. I could understand if this, you know, here's Wilbur from Mount Horeb, and he's my cousin, and so I want to put him on the board. These are high, these are qualified people. But you just said it. If it was Wilbur, their cousin, I think that would be even a better fit. They'd say, all right, fine, because that's something they would pull. I, well, and he'll he'll do. Wilbur will do what I yeah, want. Those are four women for the UW Hospital Board, right? Yes. Highly qualified, educated, probably have opinions on certain things that they don't like, and they certainly don't want to hear from dangerous liberal women. I don't know if they're liberal, but you know, to me. They, any GOP leader sees a woman with an opinion they see as a liberal. So, Well, and it's, it, again, I found this article in uh, Madison dot, on Madison.com. GOP lawmakers did not offer a reason for rejecting the UW Hospital Board appointees. But last year, Republican members of the Senate Health Committee questioned the appointees about their views on abortion policy. Yep. 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 And the, you said the other Todd Ams was uh, the Natural Resources Board? Yes. Oh, I'm he sure. Served as, he served as deputy secretary of the Wisconsin DNR before retiring in December of 2021, appointed by Evers to fill one of the seats left vacant after Senate Republicans fired four other members in October. They've taken aim at AMS for online criticism he's made in the past of the Republican Party and former President Trump. So, what? I bet you even without the Trump criticisms... The fact that he probably has opinions on, you know, conserving the environment and being good to it and having policies which maybe punish polluters and protect the people. But, you know, they don't want to hear about that. Uh, Pat texting in uh, from the 715, listening in Green Bay on WGBW. The Wisconsin GOP is going to follow the Michigan GOP broke and on the verge of extin extinction. I don't know that that's going to happen, but yeah, boy, Michigan, that's a whole nother woof. Yeah. We could do a whole show on, on the dysfunction in, in, in Michigan. <laughs> Another text, our, our friend, uh, Lynn from Oconwalk is Merlot really Brittany's last name. I believe so. It is. Yeah. I, I yeah. asked her about that. One of the first times we met, I was like, you made that up. She's right? like, you're right. You, My you last name up. is Chardonnay. <laughs> no, her name is actually Merlot. M-E-R-L-O-T, just like the wine. Love it. Yep, it's great. If you want to chime in on this, 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. Once again, our legislature doing nothing. They're so, they are good at it. They're They're really good. You know what they're really good at? They're really good at being paid with our money, too. Mm. Working, what was that, 100 days out of the year? Not even? Well, they're almost late for vacation. Woo, guys, put I mean, it down. You better get going. Get their board shorts ready. It's summertime almost. E exactly. I mean, you got places to go and people to get, ask money from. And a constituents to completely ignore. Going back to Ems, who was the uh, deputy secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and again, another one of the uh, appointees that uh, the, the Senate uh, Republicans rather rejected. M says, I know how to work in a bipartisan manner. The majority party in the Wisconsin state legislature does not. In fact, they seem to think that bipartisan 
is some sort of lethal virus because they avoid it like the plague. Hmm. I mean, well, we've seen plenty of, ex- I, I don't totally agree with that. We've seen lots of examples of them working together They've on, gotten some on various done. issues. Some things have gotten done. True. It's just, and that's, I guess the frustration is they can do it. They've shown us that they can do it. And then they just sort of sharp turn and do things like this where you're neither, you're, you're, you're di- I'm not mad guys. I'm just disappointed. Oh, right. <laughs> that's what I feel. I like, I'm not mad. I'm not shocked. I'm disappointed. Yeah. 844-967-2789 if you want to call in or text Karina from Milwaukee. Good morning, Karina. What do you want to chime in on this? Good morning. Um, you know what? I've been listening to Earl before you, and yesterday I was... this. I, I can't get the fact that a, a, a speaker listening to Trump or any other active Republican member of a government listening to the, who he, who is he? He's the, I mean, have, have ever you heard any other presidents, a former presidents dictating a policy of an existing government? Karina, what are you, what are you talking about right now? We're, we're talking about Wisconsin legislatures, legislators about him giving a direction over the media saying don't sign this leave the border for me don't go into those reforms don't do this like he was talking to uh, speaker johnson uh, just recently uh, uh through the media saying oh i'm telling you don't do this don't sign this don't discuss this remove this from the uh, yeah, from the agenda yeah karina we we, we know and, and I appreciate, and we always appreciate you calling, uh, Karina, and very much so for listening. Uh, we are going to return when we come back. More Wisconsin Hanky Panky, we'll call it. <laughs> You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Sweet Cal B coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Shout out to everybody in Wisconsin Rapids listening on WFHR. Thank you so very much for joining us. You can always call or text at 844-967-2789 or leave a comment on the live stream if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon has ruined. Uh, Very excited at 1033. We're going to play another round of the good, the bad, and... Oh, I got to get one of these. I swear oh. I got, it's a wonder oven, isn't it? No, it is not a wonder oven. <laughs> it's, it may be even more wonderful than mm. a wonder oven, but that that is coming up uh, between 1030 and 11 o'clock. Hope you can stick around for them. We have been talking about our lawmakers once again not getting anything done after firing a whole bunch of Governor Evers appointees to the hospital board and the state natural resources board just talking about it just seems petty it just seems petty to me. i don't think it seems petty it It is is petty petty. it's just the pettiest 844-967-2789 eric from wauwatosa good morning eric thank you so much for listening what's going on yeah sure good morning um hey i just was going to say along the lines of what you're talking about akin to akin to like the closing of public pools and all the other efforts that the federal government and state governments went through and during segregation I, I like to ask, um, before any of your conservative callers up, your alleged conservative callers call up, is for them to rationalize the treasure that is being wasted. Beyond the, and, uh, to kind of piggyback on what Greg had said earlier, is, is not only the efforts, but just the money. This costs so much money to retrain and reappoint and re-recruit and all this stuff, and they are just wasting taxpayers' dollars out of, as you say, spite, hatred, whatever it may be. And I'd like to hear any of your 
kind of regular or even a new conservative caller call up and rationalize these expenses and what their ends are to these means, because obviously they're re- they, they represent these voters. So we're always talking about the politicians, but they also represent people that apparently from their behavior approve of these behaviors at, in Madison and the, even in D.C. So I'd like to just throw that challenge out there for any of your conservative callers and, and for you too to comment on as well. Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Eric. Really appreciate you listening. I can understand to some extent where you don't want to give the opposition all the wins. Yeah. And and if you are against the governor's policies to appoint people who are going to help implement his policies, I understand the gamemanship there, I guess. But still, it would be nice if they actually tried to accomplish something for the state of Wisconsin. And I also think, Eric, in defense of the voters, most people have full busy lives Mm -hmm. with children and families and school and jobs and bills, or maybe they're caregivers now for elderly relatives. Not everyone is as obsessed about politics as we are. Yeah. It's just, it's fact. It's just fact. So I don't think all constituents are all that well versed on what their elected representatives are doing. And that's one of the points I think of civic media and certainly this show yeah. is to let you know what's going on in Madison and more accurately lately, what is not going on in Madison? Well, on top of that, not just um, not just because you have lives, because you have busy lives and things going on, but there are 50 news outlets just in Wisconsin that provide the news, which are, which mean great, but something that group a provides group b doesn't provide if you like group b you might not see what group a provides group c has a totally different you know we're here to distill the the information down especially wisconsin news because it is as jane says so important to you and um you know eric from tosa was talking about the training i'm also just i mean honestly from a from a cranky old man point of view i'm just saying they're a waste of money i'm paying their salary to work Two Less months. than a quarter of a year. Two months. So if you want to earn that money, get some work done. Don't just sit here and be petulant children in the schoolyard. Do something. But then it is also incumbent on us and, and incumbent on people, their constituents, to try and keep abreast of, again, what they are doing or not doing on your behalf. And as you said, they're they got a great gig, man. Yeah, it's great work if you can get it. Absolutely, they're going on vacation for another nine months because <laughs> it's been it's been exhausting two months. Greg Bach, they're pooped. I'm tired. They're just pooped. Trust me, I'm tired of talking about them. Eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine eight four four nine six seven twenty seven eighty nine. If you want to join the discussion. Uh, Tony on the live stream said, can't Governor Evers just reappoint these fired people after the legislative session ends? I mean, I assume so, yes, but when they get back into session. Then they're just going to fire them Just again. fire them right again. I mean, so this is just going to. And then no one will want to serve because they have things to do. It's like, I want to help. I have expertise. Why would I even I give my this. name to this? I don't want to be. And I want my name in the paper over this. And I think uh, as well as we all know pretty well that. They really don't care how much of our money they waste. Nope. Let's look at the bogus election investigations. Look look at the $2 million we gave Michael Gableman to come up with Zippo as far as election fraud is concerned. So I don't ever want to hear them talk about their stewardship of taxpayer dollars because it just (laughs) This is what I would do if they talked about it. I know. It (laughs) makes me snort out loud. Uh, Real quickly, Tom from L.A. Good morning, Tom. Only got a couple of minutes. What do you want to say? Yep, absolutely. First off, we the people ultimately are the government, not the corporations, and we need to realize that. Um, I think for the people that don't listen to the radio every day and people that are not as in, as uh, um, engrossed in politics as you know the people that are the callers and like myself, but we need to ask ourselves, what has the Republican um, Congress, what has the Republican at the state level ever done for working people? What have they passed that has been good for working people? 
And and that's that's the bottom line. So it doesn't take a listening to a show every single day. It really comes back to what's in it for me. And a lot of these people don't realize it, but all Republicans have is tax cuts for the billionaire class, and that is it. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, diver- uh, diversity. Is probably not the right word to use. Uh, uh, variety, among, a variety among among uh, platform ideas. Yeah. Well, I will say this too: uh, anyone who thinks that tax cuts were good, they didn't benefit you. No, but the wealthy did really, really oh, well. Yeah. And those little tax cuts that the rest of the majority of us got, those expire. The ones for the really, really wealthy, those keep going. Yeah. Just kind of the way it worked out. All right. News <laughs> is on the way, followed by a great entertainment minute with Pete Schwab. Stay close for that. And then when we return, the good, the bad, and oh, I got to get one of these. Stay close. <laughs> this is Matt Mayer <laughs> on air coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Late in the bar, by a dark and gone sea. Good morning. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Thank you so much for joining us. You can call, you can text, join in the conversation at 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and X Twitter. Just a reminder, he is our hardest working host right now, Todd Alba. He's all over the place. The Todd father. It, he's he's everywhere, he's everywhere. Can I tell you that I he he filled in for Pat this morning from six to eight. Yeah, which means he got in and was ready to go by like five thirty five five thirty, and then I said, "Oh, are you going to take a nap on the air?" I said, "No, you're going to take a nap and you know between this and your show that you're doing three hours, hours now." Yep. He said, "No, I got to prep for the show, <laughs> and that's on top of redecorating the Hayward Studio <laughs> that he did last night. That looks gorgeous. You got to check out Todd's show today. He is in Hayward. Yes." Broadcasting from the Buzz of the North, WBZH, during Berkey Week, the 50th annual Berka Biner. He can, uh, you can tune in this afternoon from noon to 3, also tomorrow and Friday as well. And then if you want live updates this Saturday from cable, uh, Gary and Big G are going to be at the Berkey, and they're going to be stopping in with Morning Cannolis with Jim Santel right here from 9 to 11. So make sure you check that out. We had been talking about the wonderful accomplishments of our state legislature and all the things they don't get done. Senate Republicans rejecting four of Governor Evers' appointments to the UW Hospital Board and the State Natural Resources Board on Tuesday. Governor Evers promptly appointed four replacements. Not sure if they're going to get fired instantaneously or if they'll (laughs) drag that out for a little bit. But uh, we have some follow-up text, Greg. Yeah, Andrew from Maine says, being a representative democracy, we are expected to elect individuals to make decisions on our behalf. Based on what they have told us during their campaign and what we hold them hold of value. Of course, the issues raised during campaigns are limited to a half a dozen or so, whereas what they are expected to vote on is limitless. And now we are being told that to not worry about some candidates, what can, some candidates say because they don't really mean it. Yeah, that's never good. No. It's, yeah, you don't, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's probably not the best thing to have to whip out on the campaign trail. I was joking. It, it was, was a, just a joke. You're so sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. always a real good sign. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Yeah. <sighs> uh, and then also uh, coming from the 920, the do nothing Republicans have been drifting to and are now firmly not conservative. They are rather more concerned about power grabs and quote unquote owning the left 
instead of making policies that help the people. They have devolved into a spiteful group of fear-mongering toddlers who want to drag others down. Enough Republican voters must have miserable lives and hate themselves enough to ride right along being willfully ignorant to reality. Insert the endless Trump grifts here. Well, I would certainly say that our politicians have devolved into a spiteful group of fear-mongering toddlers. <laughs> I, I don't think all Republicans are bad people. I, no. I genuinely don't. I, I really, really don't. I think, again, it depends upon how much you want to inform yourself and how deeply you want to look at these things and get involved in these things. MAGA Republicans are an entirely different thing. Yeah, they're. they're I don't want to say they're not worth talking to. They are. It's just more difficult. It takes more time. It takes more energy. But we've talked to many Republicans. We we have. I I I'm, I apologize if I don't I don't remember your name. We've had a gentleman who's called a few times and have said has said I am a conservative. I listen to your show because I want to learn what you believe and what you think. He's not mean. He's not disrespectful. Right. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, Retired Brigadier General Steve Anderson came on last week and made Republican it in, all his life. Or made it abundantly clear that he is not a weird liberal. No. But is very, very much on the side of democracy and freedom and the voting process and the but, protection of our friends overseas. And the Constitution. Yes. So, yeah, I I could read the anger in that text, and I get that I anger completely. But let's also take a moment to step back and say there are good Republicans out there. They yes. do speak up. Unfortunately, they don't have as much power as other ones. Uh, and now, as Andrew and Maine has has mentioned on the live stream, they're now just being called rhinos. Well, right. And if you do speak up, you get smothered. Yeah. You, you get smothered or you have to leave office because you spoke out against the party. Yeah. Shouldn't be that way. No, absolutely. It absolutely should not. And, and honestly... Kudos, I mean, kudos to Mike Gallagher for speaking up in that one moment. Kudos to Langford for speaking up. Uh, uh, Mike uh, Langford from Oklahoma. Yeah, look, to those individuals, I might disagree with them, and I might not like their position on the policy, but if your party can't take critique, then there's something desperately wrong with your party. Absolutely. 844-967-2789. All right, we're going to move along to the good, the bad, and oh, baby, I got to have one of these. A Holly Hobby doll? It is not a Holly Hobby doll. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs> uh, the Supreme Court on Tuesday, this is the good, rejected appeals from three GOP House Republicans who challenged fines for not wearing face coverings on the floor of the House in 2021. The justices didn't comment on leaving in place the $500 fine issued to, any guesses, three. My mother. Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, wait, wait, I, Matt Gates. No, Thomas okay. Massey of Kentucky. Oh, Lauren Boebert. No, and I, and I would have thought too. No, Ralph Norman of South Carolina. The mask requirement was part of the House's response, I don't know, to the global pandemic. Remember that? I, I do remember that. Uh, these three lawmakers actually showed up on the House floor without masks, posing for selfies. That's why they got fined. Lower courts had refused to disturb the fines, ruling the courts don't have the power to review the mask policy. The lawyers, even for House Speaker Mike Johnson, told the court to reject the appeal from his fellow Republicans Although they noted that Johnson and every other member of GOP leadership voted against the mask policy. I'm not quite sure what that's about. I don't either, but I'm here. He's, he's a law and order guy. <laughs> he loves that show. Uh, what was the, okay, so it was Marjorie Taylor Greene, Ralph Norman. Who was the and other Thomas one? Massey of Kentucky. I, I'm, I'm just doing something here because I want to make a point. And that point is Thomas Massey is, 50, um, is 53 years old. Marjorie Taylor Greene is 49. Ralph Norman is 70. Boomer and Gen Xers. I don't want to hear my generation or the generation above talking about they're just so lazy talking about their selfies and stuff like that. They're posing for selfies and they're adult. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's my point is like, I could see people my age and above saying like, people just don't care. They're sitting there posing for selfies and shirking responsibilities, not wearing their masks and being all dumb. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. It just bothered me that they pose for selfies with their masks off. And yet I hear people of their age 
criticizing young people for not being good enough in life. Sorry, I took it to the side there. Slight, yeah, slight, S- slight detour. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> I see you laughing, Calvin. <laughs> Onto the bad, and this is really genuinely disturbing. Yeah, Tucker Carlson. That's it. All he had to say. Once again, leaping to the defense of Russian President Vladimir Putin, claiming that anyone who thinks that Putin was responsible for the untimely death, or as they called it. Sudden unexpected death syndrome. That was actually that was actually the first thing the Russians came out with after it was reported that Alexei Navalny had died. Was unexpected death syndrome. I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm laughing at the the wording. Tucker Carlson says that anyone who thinks Putin is responsible for this is an idiot. Tucker Carlson, who just did a vanity interview with Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Praising all wonderful things in Russia, like their grocery carts. And their subway. And their subway. And their bread. Yeah. Yeah, Their grocery carts that are, by the way, available at Aldi. It's like he's never been out much. I was going to say, like, that that really, his shock to that really speaks to the fact that that man has never gone grocery shopping. At least not in the last 20 years. Yeah. So, uh, Glenn, uh, Tucker Carlson is talking to... Again, another one. For fellow former Fox News host Glenn Black, Glenn Beck. <laughs> Navalny's death during the Munich Security Conference in the midst of disputes about aid to Ukraine is definitely not beneficial for Russia. People who say Putin killed him are idiots, according to Tucker Carlson. Alexei Navalny died Friday in an Arctic penal colony where he was serving a 19-year sentence, essentially for voicing opposition to Vladimir Putin. To this point, his cause of death has not been made public. That's because they killed him. Yeah, they murdered him. Yeah, they're and they could re- they could have released the body twenty five minutes after he died and said he died of an exploding heart. I mean, like, yeah, you made the heart explode. Like, there's no version of this where I don't think you did it. And Tucker Carlson referring to us as collective idiots coming from you makes me feel like the smartest man walking the earth. This uh, these apologists. For Vladimir Putin, continue to, at least it seems to me, becoming more and more ingrained with the MAGA Republicans. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They are big fans. Yes. Big, big fans. Because Trump is a fan of them. Him. Yes. So, therefore, they have to do the slow work of changing the mind of Americans in that party that 30 years ago would have said, in this situation, said, why do you like Vladimir? He is, they would call him evil, but now misunderstood genius. Uh, apparently so. Uh, Anna Navarro, who is a commentator uh, on The View, and she makes other network appearances as yeah. well, uh, talking about this same thing on how they're all apologizing for Vladimir Putin. Uh, this is particularly offensive to me, she says, and it's befuddling. It's amazing. I have no explanation for how the party that I grew up in idolizing Ronald Reagan that confronted communism, took on the USSR, that took on the Ortegas and the Castros of the world, can be kowtowing to this horrible assassin dictator in Russia, and just instead, instead somehow equating it to what's happening in America. And she was talking about Donald Trump. He's equating himself now to Alexei Navalny. Yes. He has not yes. pushed any blame towards Vladimir Putin. He has not said that this murder was wrong or the death was wrong or anything like that. Only that Trump is like a next Alexei Navalny because he is being martyred. Yeah. Uh, the I can't remember if it was this first or the second Daily Show that Jon Stewart hosted back. Uh, Tony Zimmerman brings up a good point because Putin isn't woke. And the point that Jon Stewart was making is that it used to be capitalism versus communism, a very easy to delineate good versus evil. Sure. Now that that's sort of just, that's harder to do. It's now woke versus not woke. And they're trying to portray Putin as a not woke person. Like he does what he wants. He says what he wants. He's a manly man. He kills who he wants. He rides horses half naked and that's what they're doing with him. And that's why that he appeals to him. Appeals as a to these strong man. as a strong man who doesn't care what you think, and you just get to f your feelings. I'm going to do what I want. Exactly, I'm the leader. 
Yeah. I mean, this is it, this, this is bizarro world. It, it it is upside down world, and we keep referring to this, but I think it's really important. If you missed last Friday's conversation with retired Brigadier General Steve Anderson, and we were talking about NATO and why NATO is so important and why it is so important for the U.S. to remain in NATO and support our allies, and again, Steve Anderson is a lifelong Republican. Listen, listen to the interview. Yeah. I think you will find it really enlightening, and I encourage you to have other people take a listen to it as well. You can find it on our website at civicmedia.us. All right. The good, the bad, on the way. Oh, I got to get one of these. <laughs> Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Good morning and welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, the surgeon of sound. Calvin is on the board. We're coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. Call or text at 844-967-2789-844-96. Party. Or leave a message on the live stream. If you want to have some fun, join the folks on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. It's where all the fun happens. There is a lot. There is a lot that goes on on the live stream. It's always fun to see everybody interact with each other. So check it out. And by the way, Andrew from Maine wrote Maga Rhinos. Maga Rhinos sounds like a drink I want to try. Maga Rhino? Yeah. I'll take a is Maga Rhino. Is it over ice? It's, over, it's definitely over okay. ice. But instead of salt on the rim, bitters? motor oil. I was going to say bitters. Yeah, that was funnier. <laughs> I'm not a funny comedian. <laughs> Don't hire me, people. <laughs> All right. We've been doing a round of the good, the bad, and now we move on to, oh, I got to get one of these. <laughs> this showed up somewhere on my feed yesterday as I was looking for stuff to kick around today. And uh, apparently this was, was presented on Shark Tank a number of years ago. Yeah. And the sharks liked it. And so this product has gone into production, but there's a warning now that there are now copycats. So if you're going to buy this, you want to make sure you buy the original Hum Viewer. All right, I'll bite. Tell me more. The Hum Viewer, Greg Bach. We need some like we need some music that's like The Hum Viewer, my friends. Picture a welding mask. Oh good god. Okay. Made out of plastic, but it's yes. plastic. So you have your welding ma- mask on, made out of plastic. It's clear. Yeah. You can see through it. Yeah. And on the front of the mask, if you've ever seen what a hummingbird feeder looks like with the little flowers, you know. You aren't serious. So on the front of the mask are three little hummingbird feeder flowers. And you can sit in your garden and have them come up to your face and and, and drink nectar from the feeder. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. Maybe we deserve the people in Madison we have there right now. Oh, my God. You have to see a picture of this. This is I, this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Is it is it in our rundown? It's in our show oh, notes. Oh, God. So if you want to see the Hum Viewer, which can be yours for only $69.95, Greg Nice. Box. As seen on Shark Tank, the Hum Viewer, according to their website... 
is a wearable hummingbird feeder mask offering users an observational sensory experience. This looks like something out of, this just looks like Saw, if Saw was made by Steins Garden and Gifts. Not saying that they're a bad store. They're great. I love them. I go to get their pot, but it's, it looks horrifying. It looks, it looks like, it looks like three cigarettes sticking out of. But it's got the little flower. There. I know. But from the viewpoint of the guy who's looking way too excited about it, it looks like three unfiltered <laughs> palm malls just sticking out of some plants. Do you think it's okay? All right. Let, okay. Mm, yeah. This start, this is now the hum viewer. But it looks like it started as something else. I don't even want to know where your brain is going with I, that. It's simply going to a college dorm, watching maybe a Cheech and Chong movie. Oh, okay. And enjoying what is still currently illegal in Wisconsin. I, I'm following you now. Or at least this can be retrofitted to do so. Well, you'd have to do something about the leakage on the bottom. How would you know? I'm just speculating. Okay. I'm old. There you go. Continuing the description of the hum viewer. <laughs> I'm putting this in the live stream it for allows, our audience. It allows for multiple ways to experience hummingbirds up close by wearing the device as a mask or setting it on a surface or hanging it like a traditional bird feeder or you can hand feed by holding a flower feeder. Now, I have actually seen people on YouTube before and I don't know how long it takes to train a hummingbird to actually drink nectar from your hand, but I've seen people do it. But that must take years. If you don't have years, folks, then get yourself a Hum Viewer. <laughs> hum Viewer, only $69.95. Experience the magic of the Hum Viewer as seen as Shark Tank. Definitely don't let your college kids steal it from your garden shed. Along with your Hum Viewer purchase, it includes plastic shield with adjustable head strap, three red flower feeders, three yellow removable perches, one nectar bulb, one cleaning brush, instructions for use and nectar recipe, and a customized drawstring bag for storage. I would like to know one thing. Are the Hum Viewer people listening right now? Because we're doing a lot of advertising for them, and I would like one for free. We can reach out. Yeah. Uh, Tony Zimmerman said it perfectly. Wow, that's something. Come on, Tony. It's hilarious. It can't, okay, also, you know who would be against this item? The American Association of Eye Doctors. I just made that group up, but you get what I'm saying? Because look at be this cross. man. Is if, it they're too close? The, yeah, exactly. Look at that man's eyes. They're too close. They're going to cause bad vision. He's going to have to have glasses or laser surgery, and then he's going to pay out of pocket for it because his insurance doesn't cover it, a hum viewer eye accident, and that's what you did. You forced him to get this. You made them love it, and now it's on you, Jane Matinair. Hope you sleep at night. I, I accept the responsibility. I just think it's imperative that people... If you're going to buy one, make sure it's the original Hum Viewer. <laughs> that makes me wonder now, what are the knockoff you know, right? ones? We'll look. We'll look. We'll see what, what else we can find. <laughs> we, will, uh, we will put a link up to the Hum Viewer in our show notes. We will? Yes, we will. Great. If you want to take a look at it and decide for yourself, it's a little <laughs> joyful thing, Greg Bach. I just, I just want to sit in my backyard with that thing on to make the neighbors laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, Jane's finally <laughs> lost it. We knew she was heading that way anyways. It's finally happened. She's wearing some weird miner's mask <laughs> on her face. I don't get what's going on here. Okay. I'm very excited about this. I know you are. I can't. Between help. the birding I know. fest and this. It's a thing. It's just a thing. News is coming up next. Next hour, Civic Media's Jimmy Cuska is going to be joining us to break down some of the more serious things, school referendums last night. And then Brittany Merlot will be here for our her weekly spot. Wednesday, weather and wine with Brittany Merlot. That's coming up at 11.50. Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Hummingbird, hummingbird, fly right on by. Some folks like to gamble. But darling, not I. Some folks like to gamble, but darling, not I. Hummingbird, hummingbird, fly right on by. I'd rather be lonely, I'd rather be blue. Yes, I'd rather be 
guess I'd rather spend my whole life without you Than feather a nest to be shattered apart by the home 